Hi everyone. Hi Henry. Henry's very sleepy. Henny? Henny. Henny, are you ready? Do you want to hear the Bible? I hope he doesn't get up. <laughs> okay, let's just get to it. Um, Genesis chapter 23, and I'm reading from the Tanakh, the uh, new JPS translation, according to the traditional Hebrew text. Oh, that's cute, Henry. Okay, hopefully this won't fall. Okay. So, chapter 23, Genesis. Sarah's lifetime, the span of Sarah's life, came to 127 years. Sarah died in Kiriath Arba, now Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham proceeded to mourn for Sarah and to bewail her. Then Abraham rose from bedside, oh, I'm sorry, then Abraham rose from beside his dead and spoke to the Hittites, saying, I am a resident alien among you. Sell me a burial site among you, that I may remove my dead for burial. And the Hittites replied to Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my lord. You are the elect of God among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our burial places. None of us will withhold his burial place from you for burying your dead. Thereupon Abraham bowed low to the people of the land, the Hittites, and he said to them, If it is your wish that I remove my dead for burial, you must agree to intercede for me with Ephron, son of Zohar. Oh, I've got a... I've got interference here. Guster sniffing the iPad. Guster, oh, why don't you? Okay. Oh, no. He's rubbing the iPad with his cheek. I know, it's exciting, isn't it? Why don't you go cuddle up with your brother? Okay, he's going somewhere else. Whew, okay, where was I? Oh, I guess verse 8. And he said to them, If it is your wish that I remove my dead for burial, you must agree to intercede with me for with Ephron, son of Zohar. Let him sell me the cave of Machpelah that he owns, which is at the edge of his land. Let him sell it to me at the full price for a burial site in your midst. Ephron was present among the Hittites, so Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the Hittites. Uh-oh. So we've got a, a guster, and that's full view. Oop. Okay, so there's going to be a, an altercation. I, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I guess Guster wants to... Um, well, I can't move the camera. His head is on the Bible. <laughs> His paws on it. Okay. <sighs> okay, verse 10. Ephron was um, present among the Hittites, so Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the Hittites, all who entered the gate of his town, saying, No, my lord, hear me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of my people. Bear your dead. Then Abraham bowed low before the people of the land and spoke to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If only you would hear me out, let me pay the price of the land. Accept it from me, that I may bury my dead there. And Ephron replied to Abraham, saying to him, My lord, do hear me. A piece of land worth 400 shekels of silver, silver, what is that between you and me? Go and bury your dead. Abraham accepted Ephron's terms. Abraham paid out to Ephron the money that he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver at the going merchant's rate. So Ephron, so Ephron's land in Machpelah near Mamre, the field with its cave and all the trees anywhere within the confines of that field passed to Abraham as his possession in the presence of the Hittites. Of all who entered the gate of his town, 
And then Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave of the field of Machpelah facing Mamre, now Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Thus the field with its cave passed from the Hittites to Abraham as a burial site. End of chapter 23 of Genesis. Sarah went on. She was, I like Sarah, she was a character. She had a sense of humor. And I like that Isaac means laughter. Okay, so now we're on, I guess um, Henry is enjoying Guster as a pillow. Okay. Matthew chapter 15. That's, yeah, that's where we are. Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said to them, and why do you yourselves transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil, a father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever shall say to his father or mother, anything of mine you might have been helped by has been given to God. He is not to honor his father, or his mother and this you invalidated and and thus you invalidated the word of God for the sake of your tradition you hypocrites rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you saying this people honors me with their lips but their heart is far away from me but in vain do they worship me teaching as doctrines the precepts of men uh oh don't leave you're just oh no I have to adjust the camera Hmm, this is difficult. Um, okay, well, where did I, oh, sorry, I'm distracted now by the cats. Uh, oh, and after he called the multitude to him, he said to them, hear and understand, not what enters into the mouth defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the mouth. This defiles the man. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this statement? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father did not plant shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind, and if a blind man guides a blind man, both will fall into a pit. And Peter answered and said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you still lacking in understanding also? Do you not understand that everything that goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is eliminated? But the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and those defile the man. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, slanders. These are the things which defile the man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the man. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman came out from that region and began to cry out, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. But he did not answer her a word, and his Disciples came to him and kept asking him, saying, Send her away, for she is shouting out after us. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the, the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, your faith is great. Be it done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. And departing from there, Jesus went along by the Sea of Galilee, and having gone up to the mountain, he was sitting there. 
And great multitudes came to him, bringing with them those who were lame, crippled, blind, dumb, and many others. And they laid them down at his feet, and he healed them. So that the multitude marveled as they saw the dumb speaking, the crippled restored, and the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Oh, that's Guster. He's pawing my back. You you want to play with your string? Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Where's your string? Come on. Come up here. Penny's got it. Okay. Well, oh, I forgot where I was now. Let's see. Um. Okay. I think we're... Yeah. 32. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel compassion for the multitude because they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not wish to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, where would we get so many loaves in a desolate place to satisfy such a great multitude? And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven and a few small fish. Oh, I have to adjust. Oh, indecency. Okay, well, we'll focus up. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I will get better at this camera thing. Um, okay. We'll let, we'll let Henry attend to his hygiene matters and I'll just keep reading here and he took the seven loaves and the fish and giving thanks he broke them and started giving them to the disciples and the disciples in turn to the multitudes and they all ate and were satisfied and they picked up what was left over of the broken pieces seven large baskets full and those who ate were four thousand men besides women and children and sending away the multitudes, he got into the boat and came to the region of Magadan. Okay, well, that's the end of Matthew 15. I feel like we, yeah, I mean, he's he did, it seems like there's a lot of multiplying of the loaves and fishes going on. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. And um, I'll show you Guster if I can turn the camera. He's got his string. Oh, you want to play with the string? Huh? Here. Oops, sorry. Filming this well. Here. Oh, crazy. He loves that. Okay, Gussie, Guster, Guster. Okay, well, there's Henry. He's a very clean kitty. Oh, okay. All right, everybody, may God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. God bless, bye.